as you know, so I'm not bothered, but I know some people might be. Uh, but we're scheduled to finish at eight o'clock. Um, but we'll see how we get on. Uh, welcome everybody to this, the November meeting of North Edge Baston online ward meeting forum. I've just got to remind you that anyone listening, participating, that it will be recorded for future record via the council's YouTube channel. So whatever you say and however you look will be recorded for time immemorial. So in 100 years time, your relatives when they're doing their family trees may look up and see you participating in today's meeting. OK, um, we've got two separate yet very interrelated items. So. There will be some crossover. I'm going to be relaxed about sharing it. Um, I've got to say that it would be useful. I love looking at you because you're all very attractive people. But if you're not speaking, if you could turn your cameras off, because sometimes the system gets overloaded. Um, if, you, if you want to keep your camera on, that's entirely up to you. But it, it, we do try and advise people uh, just to switch it on when they indicate to speak. Now, in terms of indicating to speak, um, there is a chat function. Um, but there's a hand signal. Can you see it? There's a hand signal. If you could raise your hand if you want to speak. Jan's just raised her hand now. She's just put it down. Rebecca Farr's doing a thumbs up, so I think you've all got the hang of it. Um, and I shall keep uh, um, you all in. David G has just put his thumb up, so you're all it's all working very well. Good. OK, so two separate yet related issues. The first one is something that I think it probably wouldn't have happened if it hadn't have been for residents. Uh, pushing for it, and that's the Smethwick to Birmingham Corridor Development Framework and Grove, Grove Lane Area Master Plan Public Consultation. Very important meeting, uh, very important issue, sorry. And we've got Neil Holly, the Principal Development Planning Officer, who will give a short presentation on this, and then he will be able to answer any questions that you have. So over to you, Neil. You're on mute, just to remind you. Uh, thank, thank you, Councillor Rice. Um, I'm just going to see if I can uh, share my screen. Just bear with me a second. Um, can you see a PowerPoint slide? Yeah, yes. that's the comment. Good stuff. OK, um, yeah, so as uh, Councillor Rice said, this is um, about the Smethwick Corridor um, Framework and Grove Lane Master Plan. We came, I think Becky and I were at a North Edge Baston Ward meet, forum meeting in December of last year, which was when this project was really kicking off. Uh, but we're now at a stage of actually having some outputs, some documents to consult on, and the public consultation is running now. Uh, so the, um, really today I'm just going to kind of provide a very brief out overview of what we're consulting on, what the purpose of the documents is, uh, and then uh, how you can respond to the consultation. Uh, I should say that um, any comments, I'm going to be taking notes later, so any any comments or issues raised in the meeting um, tonight, I will be taking down and, and reflecting uh, in, in our report on the consultation, but I'd also encourage people to look at the documents and and uh, and and provide um, formal responses through Be Heard or a specific or the special website we've set up, which I'll come on to. Um, so this is the first document. It's the it's the corridor development framework. Um, this is both a Birmingham Council and a Samuel Council document. So we're we're working together on this because this uh, we want to take a joined up approach, and and and, and the corridor really crosses boundaries. Um, so this is this is. A kind of diagrammatic representation of the area that the document covers. Um, it goes from uh, the the, the uh, middle way at the edge of Ladywood, all the way through to um, Smethwick Golden Bridge Station, following the the corridor of the Dudley Road Soho Way uh, and the Birmingham Canal. Uh, and and with this is a it, it kind of in plan form. And, and within this corridor, there are kind of three main areas of a big development that's planned. 
The main one in Birmingham is City Hospital, though then we have the area around the Midland Met Hospital, which is just on our boundary. And then in uh, in Sandwell, up around um, Rolf Street Station. So there were separate chapters in the document for each of those main three areas. Um, we've set out some guiding principles for the um, corridor, and um, this is them in, in very brief um, format, but you can see them in, in full in the, in the uh, document. Uh, and that's trying to, what we're trying to achieve is a, is a kind of joined up approach and cohesive approach to development in this corridor. Uh, and, and so the, the document in terms of the development framework will be a planning document that we use to determine planning applications. But it's also a kind of shared vision and, and a, uh, investment document for uh, Birmingham and Samwell councils, but also our partners in um, the combined authority Transport for West Midlands, Homes England, uh, the Canal and River Trust and uh, the NHS Trust, who are um, obviously a major employer and um, a player in, in the corridor and who are all signed up to this document and worked with us in, in putting it together. Um, so, so just focusing on the, the kind of one of the, the bigger sites in, in, uh, in Birmingham City Hospital, obviously it's not news that City Hospital is going to be uh, redeveloped, um, but what, what we're trying to do through this document is add a level of detail and principles um, beyond that that's in the in the Birmingham development plan uh, and and those are some of the the principles that we're looking at um, uh, I think a, 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 an important thing that we're trying to emphasize is is, is is securing access to the canal and new walking links uh, I should say the plan on the bottom left uh, shows that it's not the entire hospital that's being redeveloped the NHS trust are keeping the the eye hospital and uh, the the Birmingham treatment center and the, and the car park between them so it one of the things we have to do is is integrate the new uh, redevelopment which will be mainly housing uh, with the the retained hospital facilities on that site um so if if you're interested I encourage you to look at the the um the the chapter on the city hospital and obviously provide us with any thoughts that you have on on how best um, the redevelopment of the hospital can be taken forward so that we can reflect that in the policy. Um, so that, that's the overview of the, of the development framework. Alongside that, we're consulting on a more detailed master plan for just the Grove Lane area around the hospital, the new hospital. Uh, and this is this goes into a bit more, more detail and is intended to be more of a kind of delivery document, uh, which is being led by Samwell Council because the, the uh, the site is mainly around the hospital is mainly within their administrative area. Uh, so that, that that's a, a kind of 3D visualization for what the master plan looks like for that area around the, uh, the, the new hospital. You can see the hospital and the it is the kind of area is the big, big building towards the north of the um, circular open space on the left hand side. Uh, but just some headlines. Um, there's a proposal for a new primary school. Uh, and new linear open spaces, public access to the Cape Palm uh, Canal uh, alongside the new hospital, uh, new routes from Dudley Road through to the new hospital and, and uh, a proposal uh, for a new learning campus uh, uh, close to the, the, the hospital site, um, which will bring a, a, a collaboration of, uh, uh, with the NHS Trust and local universities and a, a mix of um, housing and flats with um, retained heritage buildings. So again, if you're interested in the detail, I'd encourage you to, to have a look at that. Um, I just want to highlight one element of that master plan that's particularly relevant for, for the people of Birmingham, which is um, the proposals in there in relation to Moylet Street Park. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so the, the uh, the notion in the master plan is to redevelop uh, the park um, for in part housing, but also in, in order to do that, to uh, facilitating a retained, uh, an enhanced retained park. Um, so you can see the diagrams there. Uh, part of that is to facilitate a new walking route through to the hospital. And we're aware of the, the, the kind of issues that currently occur in relation to um, uh, the management of, of, of fly tipping and parking around the park, particularly on Moyliet Street. And, and so the idea is to provide some active frontages and edges to the park. 
at the north and southern ends uh, to kind kind of make it a more a, a feel it more of a safe, attractive environment. Um, so I would appreciate appreciate that that is something that's um, well, it's not an entirely new uh, proposal because I know the the municipal housing trust have, have um, consulted on the idea of redeveloping it before, but we've not had this kind of level of detail uh, as to what could happen there. Um, so I'd encourage people to to obviously have a look and, and provide their thoughts on that. Um, uh, I think the other the other thing that, that, that I highlight in relation to the park is just the idea of having a, um, a pocket park on the Dudley Road as a kind of link through to it. Um, so I appreciate I've rattled through that at, at a very um, sort of rapid pace, um, but I want to really throw the floor open to people to ask questions and and uh, and rather than it kind of be a lecture with me talking. Um, but as I said at the start, um, the consultation is running now. We've got two more weeks to go. Uh, you can find out more on the website there, of Smethwick uh, to Birmingham Corridor .com, or on Birmingham Be Heard, or you can email us or, 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 or phone me and my contact details, or email me my contact details uh, on, on the start of this presentation, which I can circulate after the meeting. Um, and hard copies, if you want them, are on in Spring Hill and, and, and Smethwick Library. Um, so that's that's kind of it for me. Um, with two documents out for consultation, I think they have um, a big role in setting the kind of blueprint for how the, the future development of this area goes forward, both in Birmingham and in Samwell. So I'd encourage everyone to have a look and, and, and provide their thoughts. OK, thanks very much, Neil. We've got Austin Bell from the Midland Metropolitan Hospital here. Austin, I don't know whether you want to come in here and just uh, give us your perspective from the hospital. Um, residents are naturally worried about potential proliferation of of off street car park of, of on street car parking in in the streets in and around uh, Birmingham. Um, and in the past, some of your predecessors have come along and talked about what the hospital is doing. A to make sure that staff and visitors uh, use public transport and, and cycling and walking as much as possible. Uh, but how are you going to help us manage um, what is going to be a, 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 a new developing situation moving forward? So yeah. over to you. J just what's your role, Austin? So, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm the project director for the new hospital, for new Midland Metropolitan Hospital. Uh, but my, the other role I have is uh, leading on various regeneration projects around Midland Met and also City Hospital. So I have been working with Neil and his team now for probably a year, year and a half, I think, on, on, on the kind of stuff that we're now um, consulting on. So really pleased to see how it has developed um, over that time and this sort of collaboration between us. And, and I think just to take your point there, Councillor, you know, the whole, you know, the fundamentals around transport and active travel. Um, you know, if people read the documents, they'll see that both of our hospitals sit up key so transport nodes, creek key intersections, the canals cross them, various cycleways, you know, existing and proposed cross them, various bus routes cross them. So we, we are actively encouraging our staff to to come to our sites by um, public transport and by active travel. And we're making provision, certainly in the new, in the new middle of Met for, for that. Um, our Panzer City Hospital are a much earlier stage, so you know those will know we've actually we're currently building a multi-storey car park at City Hospital at the moment, which is for our, which is basically sized for our future needs um, when we vacate uh, most of the land there and we retain our services at uh, BMEC and the, the BTC. So you know our expectation is that our staff will either use that um, and and visitors will also use that, uh, but also our staff will be coming to site by by public transport as well. Um, just moving to Midland Met, which is you know the one which is under construction at the moment. Um, we're providing some circa 1,800 spaces at Midland Met. Um, the majority are for staff, uh, the minority are for patients and visitors. As a reason for that, this Midland Met isn't a district general hospital, it's sort of standard hospital, it's an acute hospital, so most people will come and they'll be staying for, for, for a period of time. It, it isn't an outpatient hospital, so we're not anticipating in our modelling lots of uh, people coming and going every day, um, the sort of public coming and going every day. It's our staff who are the, the bulk of our people there. Um, 
But there is a there is section 106 agreement. Um, so when Middle Met opens, if there are issues with parking on surrounding streets, um, uh, we're going to fund a residence parking scheme. So to protect uh, uh, parking spaces for the residents in that area. Uh, and you will know, particularly around Middle and Met, a lot of that area, certainly to the north east of the, of the site, is currently um, an industrial site, so kind of manufacturing industrial, and, and that is captured in the Grove Lane uh, Grove Lane plan, and, and you know the transport and the parking will all have to be part of that whole transport strategy. Um, but certainly all the plans that we're looking at at the moment, the learning campus is one of them, we're looking at reducing our parking requirements. We're focusing on disabled, we're focusing on the stuff that we have to have, uh, and focusing on on how we can, for example, um, bring the Cape Arm back into use, bring the 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 um, the towpath from the Birmingham Main Line directly into Midland Met. Um, you know, we, we know the Canal River Trust are looking to dual the towpath along the Birmingham Main Line, and so we're we're all talking together about how that gets dualed and how the link gets made directly into middle and met to make it seamless to access via bicycle and, and on foot. So there are lots of things that we're working on with our local partners to to achieve that um, that uh, that desire of active travel and public transport. OK, thank you. Um, Austin, I'm intrigued by the section 106. Is that limited to Sandwell NBC area or is that um, I believe it is. Yes, I believe. Yeah, it is I, I thought so because it, it's the first Sharon and I have heard of it. So uh, I, we would have, we would have, uh, yeah, we would have bitten your hand off. Um, yeah. Okay. It's be, and it's because and it's because we've obviously the planning permission is with Samuel Council. So yeah. That's what and there's was. no prospect of that being a little bit flexible. I I, I don't know. It's it, it, yeah, it's, it's section 106, so I'm not sure what flex there would be. I mean, the, I guess the issue is we're, we're right on hard on the board with Birmingham, aren't we? So, uh, you know, the only thing I would say is the work that we're doing with all the all the partners, Birmingham and Sandwell, and and uh, you know, and and Transport West Midlands as well. You know, we should be looking at it. This this should be looked at holistically. Yeah. yeah. And and yeah. just just a question for Neil. Neil, whenever Sharon and I meet with highways to talk about residence parking schemes, uh, and I'm not saying it's going to happen, because um, we're Sharon and I are doing some work with local people around their preferences. Um, but whenever we talk to highways about residence parking schemes, they say it's no good doing it in a piecemeal way, because all you're going to do is displace it from one set of streets to another. So if Sandwell has a residence parking scheme, I think we all know what's going to happen is people will just drive the few yards across the border into Birmingham. So Neil, you need to be acutely aware that if something like that happens in uh, Sandwell, then Sharon and I are going to uh, expect the same degree uh, of um, residence parking scheme infrastructure in 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 the areas that most affected by the hospital. Uh, I, I understand that. I'm, I'm, obviously, I'm not a transport planner, but uh, um, we do have a joint um, working group for this area, as Austin's mentioned, and, and and specifically, we also have a transport working group which Jake, who's one of the who's going to speak um, next, um, chairs. So um, we are trying to to follow a, a, a joined up approach. Yeah. Um, with, with all of the the big players in this area and, and certainly with Samwell um so um uh, it's certainly on our radar uh, and um i i I've, i agree with the, the the issue you've cited is 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 clearly something that we need to be aware of and and austin sharon and i'll probably want to have a meeting with you uh in, in the very near future it's good to have you on board and and the way you've spoken i think you've reassured local residents massively that the hospital is well aware of it, the implications when it opens. And can you just confirm what the likely opening date is going to be now? You're on, you're on mute. We're currently, we're currently waiting for confirmation of when Valve Beat are going to hand it to us. We're, we're expecting it to be towards the end of next year, early part of the following year, and then we'll be doing our operational commissioning. So. We expect Ooh, okay. early okay. sometime, okay. sometime okay. spring, hopefully 2023. Okay, thanks very much. I've got several hands. I'll begin with my ward colleague, Sharon. Sharon, over to you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Carl, and thank you both for your presentations. I guess for me, in terms of the master plan, I, I do welcome this. I remember, and I think Carl will remember, a few years back sitting in the council house with a couple of um, local residents. I think maybe Jan, maybe had been one of them actually, and Sarah, uh, with Toby actually, when he was in place talking about this in the very early days. So to actually hear some of the things that was raised then transformed into this plan um, is, is quite encouraging. Um, I guess I just want to really echo Carl's point about the um, resident parking scheme. And I totally understand that the hospital will encourage people to travel in on bus and, and cycle and walk. Um, but my experience has been sometimes with hospitals that if the actual um, cost of car parking in the park, park, car parking is high, then people tend to park in res residential streets um, to clo park closer to work. So um, that's why we really would welcome kind of further discussions around that. And particularly just want to highlight the fact that in full council, we did submit a um, petition from a huge amount of residents about a car parking scheme. And it has been motivated by the fact of the hospital um, relocation and opening back up. And we'd like to think that that will be considered and whatever assistance the hospital could give in that regard. Um, alongside working with um, the council, that would be hugely welcomed. OK. Um, Eva. Thank you, uh, Neil and Austin, uh, for the presentations. Uh, my question is, and I know I'll be able to find it if I wade through the consultation document, but I'll, you probably got it in the top of your head. Uh, heads, and that is what proportion of the 1,000 homes are allocated to affordable housing and social housing, please? Uh, the, the proportion would be in accordance with the, um, the, the Birmingham Development Plan policy. So we don't set a new um, affordable housing uh, requirement through this plan. So it's, it's, as, as Becky said, it's, it's the 35% that applies to all uh, development uh, in, uh, in Birmingham. So um, uh, obviously that will be fixed at the planning application stage, but that's the policy ask. And we, we, we can't vary that and make it higher through this document. That's one that has to go through the, 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 the local plan. So um, the, the only time that can be changed is when the new Birmingham plan comes forward to replace the existing Birmingham development plan. Thank you. Is that also the target for Sandwell or or is it being regarded as one? Uh, I believe it is the same target in Sandwell, yeah. Um, OK. OK. Um, you, is that BMHT? scheme so is it was that a B bmht scheme no so that's city hospital will be is it oh, a right. scheme? Okay. so homes england will be the, the 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 applicant for planning permission um in the first instance but they won't actually build the houses uh, so that that's exclusively in birmingham those yeah that's right how many in sandwell neil uh, as part of this as, as uh, overall as part of this plan yeah um, there, good question, and I don't have the answer off 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 the, the top of my head. It's um, it's a couple of thousand at least, yeah, isn't it? It it it, it is. Um, uh, uh, um, because I'm I'm trying to think of what the number is on the um the the Rolf Street area, but yeah, it's pushing a couple of thousand. Yeah. So I mean, that's three thousand homes. Some of those will be single apartments, I would think. But so we're talking about potentially anything between three and five thousand new residents in this uh, already quite congested area um okay um i mean which is that which is why it's absolutely vital that we achieve these principles in terms of making this a a, a, a neighborhood that's kind of green travel and sustainable travel focused yeah. um and, and why the joined up approach that we're trying to take is, is the is the right one to doing that Sure, sure. I know whilst there's a particular um, focus on this area with this presentation, I know it's an aspiration of the City Council to try and, and encourage uh, different forms of transport other than the motor vehicle um, to and from work, school, uh, particularly schools. Uh, David. David Garrison. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hi. I've just got two questions, which I think are fairly simple. One is, um, Neil, when you showed the map of City Hospital, 
um, there's a kind of an area there which is shown as um, air, buildings that will be retained. I think that map's quite wrong, isn't it? Because north of the car park, the new car park, the multi-storey car park, you've got the eye hospital and you've got the um, the stroke unit. They're north and then a bit to the left. And they don't seem to be shown at all. So that was one query. Shall I say the second one now? The, the second one was to Austin. Um, it's about the, that multi-storey car park in City Hospital. It really bugs me. It just seems enormously big and oversized, really. It looks really ugly. It, to me, it's a blot on the landscape. And I, I just don't know why you need quite so many car parking spaces for not really a huge amount of hospital facilities. So those are my two questions. Thank you. So in relation to the buildings to be retained, I, I, sorry, sorry, I'll start to, to, if I can answer the first question first. Um, the, the, the eye hospital is is being retained. Um, the annotation on the map was, um, I think, buildings to be retained within the part of the hospital that's being rede redeveloped. And the aspiration of Birmingham Council is to keep the the main infirmary building, which is the of, of the Victorian buildings, the one mm -hmm. on the, kind of the south of the site closest mm -hmm. to the Dudley Road. Um, and so that's the building that's indicated as a building to retain to be retained within oh, the development okay. site. But the the the, um, the, um, the eye hospital isn't part of the redevelopment site, so that's that's obviously going to be being kept. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And the multi-story. Uh, is that one for us? <laughs> I don't know how to respond honestly to a multi-story car park being. Uh, yeah, they are. They is ugly. I, I'm not going to pretend it isn't ugly. I think. I think um, it is size for what we need for that site. Uh, it isn't too big. That that that's for sure. Um, I think but the, other, the other thing to note is we're, we're looking, we're actually looking at, uh, at whether we can uh, reprovide the eye hospital in the future. So the eye hospital is, is um, for those of you know, very, very well used, very popular service. And we're looking at, at, at whether we can um, actually reprovide it um, larger on that site. So part of the reason for having Mudstory Car Park is to give us a flexibility to, to free up the space on the site that we're going to be left with. Once we once we once we hand over most of the hospital to uh, Homes England, and our and our, our plan, David, is that you know the the site that we've got at City doesn't just stay static; that will change. Um, we think there's opportunity to bring more services to that site. The, the, the treatment centre will stay, the eye hospital will stay, but in different different location, hopefully. And we did our initial expression of interest to the government um, about two months ago now for 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 to start the process for funding for that. So. Um, yeah, they're never they're never beautiful car parks. Unfortunately, certainly multi-story ones uh, is the right size, but it's part of a, a bigger plan, which which will come out at some point in the future. And we're working on working on a, a, a kind of a joint plan with Homes England for that whole site at the moment. We're we're quite keen to see how it develops, and it's not a sort of less less a less than them type um, development, given that we'll be there forever. Will you really be able to get a thousand houses into the into the space that's left then? Because it's a lot smaller than I thought. Um, I, I'll leave that to Homes England to to, to think about. Mm. But I think what will be the case, and I'm going to I'm going to speak. I'm going to um, you know, I'm not going to speak for them here. But what I would say is, if you look across the road at the, uh, I think it's called the Soho Loop development. It's gone much yeah. higher than was ever originally planned. So when they first did their planning, I can't remember what the stories were, but mm. it has gone up since then. So I think people are seeing the opportunity for denser development. Um, you know, more single two bedroom type apartments. So the, the, the kind of the, the, the mix has changed over the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK, thank um, you. Austin, can I just uh, ask a supplementary, please? Um, how have you done your modelling on the numbers, of the size of that car park? And where do people park at the moment? Because it's a... Uh, you know, the, you're not building any additional services on that site, are you? Um, are you anticipating that some staff from the Midland Met will park there and then be bussed down to the new hospital? No, no. The the, the, the Midland Met um, should pick up its own kind of car parking requirements. And I can't answer how I can't answer the question how we've how we've sized it. I, 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 that wasn't part of the kind of car parking modelling, if you like, but. Okay. The, the intention is not that we that we park people at city if you like and then take them to middle and met that isn't the plan you know, we move people between sites regularly so we have a shuttle bus which runs between different sites that's for people who might need to be at city in the morning and somewhere in the afternoon and back again yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and now when sharon and i met uh oh, 
couple of years ago, 18 months ago. I mean, the fact that you're keeping the outpatient separate from the acute hospital is good in terms of um, over concentration of car parking. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that you've got that shuttle bus between the two, because almost certainly staff will be moving from one to the other, from the okay. acute to the outpatient. So the fact that the, you'll have a shuttle bus doing it rather than uh, um, private transport is, uh, that's, is that's, that's correct that's correct and and you know the you know uh, taking our three main hospital sites you know middle met um city and and samwell you know samwell's quite a way away so you know if you want to get to samwell from middle met or city it's it's a bit of a trek but actually to get from city to, to middle met is actually very very short distance in yeah. reality uh, and the idea is that um you know you can walk it at the moment it's not particularly pleasant because uh, the traffic and the fumes but if we can if we can bring to life the idea of properly connecting the towpath on you know around Soho Loop and at the main line into the Cape Arm, then, that, then staff can walk you know 10 15 minutes along that towpath between yeah. the sites. Yeah. So good. Good. You know, it'd be perfect. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Alison. Alison Thompson. Over to you. Thanks. Um, yeah, it was really good to see green spaces in there. And I love the idea of a pocket park on, on Dudley Road. I suppose the, the only thing is green spaces can mean a wide range of different things. And there's a vast difference between just having stretches of grass and actually doing something like having an orchard or a meadow or planting trees. And it's just a plea, really. You know, I think green spaces can often be the last thing that, you know, they get included, but they're not necessarily totally planned for. But, you know, with, with the climate crisis that we're facing, then I think any green space, you know, has got to be promoted and we should be doing whatever we can to use it to promote biodiversity. Um, so, you know, I'm just interested, you know, are there specific plans in relation to the green spaces? And if not, could, could that be taken on board in terms of making the best possible use of them in terms of improving the area? Neil? Yes, I think that's a very good point. Um, it is something that we're trying to use as a kind of structuring principle. So one of the guiding principles is a green corridor. And um, there are a couple of elements to that. One is that um, we want to try and use the canal as a way of enhancing biodiversity in the corridor. Um, but we also want to enhance some of the green spaces and add to the spaces. So um, I talked about Moylet Park earlier. Um, I don't think that's a, a space that's reaching its potential at the moment. And and uh, one of the opportunities is to use the development as a catalyst to improve that space as a, as a space that people use, but also in terms of a, a natural space and biodiversity value. Uh, and both the, um, the, the city hospital and the Grove Lane master plans um, are, are really um, kind of landscape led. So in the in the Grove Lane master plan, there's an idea of, of, of kind of a network of linking green spaces. And, and, and certainly we wouldn't be looking for, as you described, kind of leftover spaces being green spaces. These are kind of a central element to structure the space and, and make it an attractive place to, to, to live and work because um, that, that's going to be vital to the future success of the of the area. Yeah, yeah, we don't want the green deserts that are so familiar on on sixties and seventies council housing estates as they were lost for my colleague uh, Jan Jan Smith. Hi, um, thanks ever so much. Um, a couple of queries. Um, Austin, you said there was 18,000 spaces, but you, you didn't say how many were for the public. So 1,800 spaces and public is circa 400, I believe. How many beds is the new hospital? Yeah, 650. So if everyone has one visitor, there's not enough spaces. Yeah, people don't people don't come all at the same time though. So I mean, we've done, we've done a lot of modeling around around this. Uh, to make sure we've got the right right numbers. The other thing we have is um, our car parking split across two levels, so uh, we are able to change the the split between the two if we need to. So you can access both levels from from each level, uh, and uh, we're able to if, you know if we need to to change 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 the mix if uh, if there's a specific problem. But um, it is sized on what we believe will be required based on the bed numbers. Right. My, my other query is, um, as a woman, and I'm not a young woman, 
I, I would not feel safe walking along the canals. And it seems like you're promoting that a lot of people should be visiting the hospital by walking along the canals. You would not get me anywhere near a canal towpath in this area. And I'm wondering if you've got any plans, how are you going to make them safe? Um, so, uh, I don't know if Neil or Jake want to inv get involved in that. I, I, I can come in and respond. Is um, I, I think one thing to say is that the um, in, in some places the canal now is not the canal as it will be. So, uh, for example, at City Hospital, we're, uh, the, on the southern edge of the, the Soho Loop, there will be uh, buildings f fronting that, or at least facing it, and public access to it. Um, the same is true of the... Um, the, the, the canal and the Cape Arm uh, as you approach um, the uh, Midland Met Hospital um, because it, the, the area that I mean and for obvious reasons industry that was built along the canals tended to back onto it but as uh, parts of it are redeveloped for housing the housing wants to front onto it to have nice canal side views so um, the, the future canal will not be as the canal is there um, the other thing is that we have a, a, a proposal in the um, in the framework for lighting sections of the canal and I think that's one of the issues in terms of security um, uh, and so the, the, the idea is looking at, at a lighting, sensitive lighting along the canal uh, at the parts that are likely to have the most footfall so perhaps around City Hospital or around the new hospital um, to try and make it feel more secure um, but uh, we understand that it's not going to be the, the route of choice for everyone so um, <laughs> as, as Jake will come on to the transport strategy is not just about uh the the canals and um that but i i think that is a, an important element to it and I, I think that they have much more potential as a route than, than they are realizing at the moment well I, I i do tend to disagree on that but i also wonder what the public transport routes are going to be like to the midland the new hospital i mean i know the 82 and the 87 i think are going via the hospital or the 89, um, it, what's happening with the number 11 bus? Is that being rerouted? And if so, how? Or are no bus routes being rerouted? They're all just the, the ones... Yeah. I think going... Jan's particularly worried because if it is rerouted and there's no left turn at um, the Dudley Road, City Road <laughs> junction, <laughs> Then it's going to go down Shenston Road, which is her road and which is already a cut through for traffic wanting to get from to turn left because you can't turn left from City Road onto Dudley Road. So is that one for you, Jake? Yes, um, there was a, a group um, set up when the hospital was originally being built to sort of look at the bus provision and then um, sort of the how the history you know the history of the hospital's construction has panned out um that's recently reformed so at the moment officers from transport for west midlands birmingham and samwell are working with national express west midlands to sort of revisit all the, the plans for getting suitable bus um, access to the hospital um so that i think the core of it will be as you say the 82 the 87 plus the the 89 and then at the moment it's like looking at possible options of extending existing services like so one idea would be to extend the 79 from West Bromwich onto the hospital so you open up access um, better from the backcountry and another thing is looking at the outer circle and how could that um you know sort of better serve how could that serve the, the hospital mindful you know that any change in route has sort of pros and cons so it's being looked at at the moment and I think um, sort of next year because it's such a, a big issue there will be some sort of um, public consultation you know with sort of how, how we're doing this and we'll need to talk with, with the hospital and, and the councils to sort of agree a sort of draft set of suggestions. Okay. Um, Jake just to let you know the reason why there's no left turn from City Road onto Dudley Road, as there was a fatality probably 20 years ago. And at the inquest, mm. I think it was um, suggested that the council put a no left turn on. Um, and as you know, when an inquest uh, makes a recommendation, uh, you're usually obliged to, to follow it. Um, 20 years is a long time. 
but if you do reroute the number 11, then you need to liaise with the city council about, you know, which route it goes and, and obviously consult with local people because yep. there are there are implications. Yeah. Sharon, you wanted to come in. Yeah, thanks, Carl. It was just to um just to make the point really that um at the very beginning when we first started talking about some of the um this master plan and, and actually the partners that needed to be around the table, there was a promise made that actually um, when we were consulting the public, it was a bit deeper than just consulting that went online and coming to um, ward meetings and things that actually that we could pull together a number of local residents that live locally, use the bus routes and are um, affected by the changes that take place locally, could almost come together as almost as a focus group um, to, to feed in their views as well. And I'd like to think that that would be honoured. Some commitment yeah. there, Jake, would be nice. Yes, yes, sorry. Yes, so yeah. What what um talking to bus colleagues, we're gonna work with the NHS Trust and Birmingham and Samwell and um sort of get come together with some you know meaningful consultation. So we'll, we'll take that we'll do that. Okay. Um that's the, the questions on um the, the corridor development framework. No one else has indicated uh there and we're just halfway through so that's good timing um half the meeting for one issue and then half for the Dudley road corridor transport strategy and we've got two presentations we, jake you're going to start off i understand that's uh, right just, jake is from transport for the west midlands which um is uh responsible for the transport infrastructure not the infrastructure but planning for um, the West Midlands County, which is the old West Midlands County County. And he's asked me to say he's not responsible for the trams. Um, so don't ask him any questions about why the trams have been taken out of service. And then after Jake, we're going to have Robert Warner, who's the Senior Transport Delivery Officer for Birmingham City Council. So Jake first and then Robert, over to you, Jim. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'll just put um, some slides up. Okay, can people see the slides? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, good. So yeah, sorry, uh, yeah, I'm Jake Thrush from the policy team at Transport for West Midlands, um, which is part of the West Midlands Combined Authority. Um, so a bit of sort of context for the, the transport strategy for the, the Dudley Road area. Um, you know, very topical with COP26. The government recently published their national decarbonisation strategy, which includes the transport um, element, which they published earlier this year. Um, with some big demands to reduce the amount of car vehicle kilometres in the next 10 years and beyond and you know the uh, electrification of transport and of hydrogen. Um, the current transport plan that we're working to movement for growth and we're currently um, producing a new um, strategic transport plan sort of legally called the local transport plan um, so we'll be consulting on that uh, next year and that we we did some initial consultation on like the issues sort of issues green paper type thing um based on five motives for change which cover um things like creating a fairer society reducing carbon and um, promoting active travel a lot, a lot of the themes that um, neil mentioned for the transport strategy in the framework um birmingham's just approved its new transport plan um and the black country authorities have recently finished their consultation on their 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 draft plan which again is about um regenerating and growing the black country and accommodating that growth with a more sustainable transport system um you know less use of car for a lot of reasons but to accommodate the, that growth and regeneration um so so in that context nationally and for the conurbation this 
um, draft strategy that's part of this joined up land use transport framework. It like fleshes it out um, for the corridor and you know recognising the local particular issues that are going on in this corridor. Um, but it sort of, sort of seeks to sort of, you know, um, it's informed by this overall context. And then um, recently with the um, the budgets, we've been uh, awarded £1.05 billion for the West Midlands for capital investment over the next five years. We actually bid for £1.75 billion with some over-programming because, you know, schemes always have complications, some drop, so you, you sort of over-budget a bit. But we're now negotiating all the seven councils in Transport for West Midlands about a programme to fit that £1.05 billion, including um, transport measures in the corridor. And the aim is to get an approved programme sort of approved at the Combined Authority Board in uh, January, which is very tight and there's a lot of negotiations going on with that. And then also mindful, we've got the Commonwealth Games next year and there'll be some temporary measures like shuttle buses to the swimming pool um, and sort of walking routes. Um, so that again, there's lots of things going on um, related to this corridor. Um, so it's set out in in the draft development framework and it, in a nutshell it's it's about improving public transport cycling and walking to improve travel options for people um, and supporting the new development in the corridor so two things going on there really and um just a sort of very quick overview that these are all from the, the from the framework documents so the public transport approach is very much based on uh, much better bus um, services for the area based on um, the cross city bus route scheme that we've been awarded funding for for the 82 87 um, make making improvements to those which rob will be talking about um, later in, in, in his presentation related to the Dudley road major scheme um, other sort of um, changes to bus provision for the hospital like some you know possible extensions of existing routes and, and we've talked about the outer circle as well and then with rail and metro it's more really about um sort of improving access to the stations and stops and and obviously having an effective resilient rail and metro network in place and then walking um you know critical um part of the transport mix um it, again it's like making improvements lots of small scale measures to make walking more pleasant and um, safe and an attractive option for the short journeys so um sort of improvements to the, the main roads and also um you know improved links to to the, the metro stops and smelling uh, ralph street um so again and you know things like you know it's it, a lot of places difficult to cross roads and there's you know parking on pavement you know there's lots of things that you can do to improve conditions so that's an important element of the transport strategy and um again cycling there's a key bit really is to join the two two bits of cycle track that are being built by samwell and by birmingham um and to be honest we're still looking at how that's done exactly but that will provide a really effective um route from from the black country into birmingham in this corridor and then there's improvements to the canal towpaths and, and other uh, measures for more sort of local area wide um cycling and then highways and the, the hospital travel plan which we've talked about briefly as well and again it's it's you know we've got scarce highway capacity how best to use it to move people and to move goods in sustainable ways that um you know like reduce carbon help improve their quality um you know and just generally sort of you know get get people moving more effectively so we've got the, the major road the major scheme for Dudley road related to that cross city bus route um quite an important element of the strategy is um, looking at the grove lane cranford street junction and samwell are uh, they put in a bid for a previous pot of money the um, housing and infrastructure fund um, which um, didn't happen so again that's an important element um, there's a travel plan as part of the planning approval of the hospital in 2015 with you know the parking provision and the bus service changes and again i've just highlighted that the, there's commitment that there's a requirement sorry that the hospital looks at um the sort of residence parking issues 
before and after opening of the hospital. So next steps, um, this is all set out in, in a document which tries to join up land use and transport. Um, we'll, we'll hear what people say, we'll get their reactions, comments, and then in light of that, the aim is to, to have a sort of a final um, document, um, which is considered in February by Birmingham and San Juan's planning authorities. And again, you know, the, we've got the sort of the schemes already in progress. We've got some more funding and hopefully we'll be able to start actually seeing measures on the ground in line with the strategy, um, which will be approved in February, um, subject to you know consideration of what, what happens at the consultation. So uh, that's that's my slides and I welcome any comments and questions from people. I don't, know what, I don't know what's happened to call there, but Chris, did you want to ask a question? Because your hand went up first. I'm on, I'm on mute, Chris. Chris Vaughan, yeah. Yeah, uh, a few years ago, quite a long time ago, I belonged to a group called DRAG, which was the Dudley Road Action Group. And one of our members was a chap called Hersey Ahmed, who originally was, uh, was from uh, North Africa, uh, Somalian. He's a Somalian. Uh, and Carl will remember him. Uh, and he said, I wonder at the English language, it's such a wonderful thing because mm -hmm. here we are talking about a corridor when <laughs> in fact what you mean is a four lane highway blasting through the existing community. Uh, a corridor for most of people is a nice, nice narrow little uh, way through, say at the side of a train or in the middle of a train, but uh, it, and it, it, you've got all the other words in there, like sustainable and levelling up, uh, when in fact, uh, w the question I would ask is, what benefits is this to the local communities? Certainly benefit to the people who live on the, all the, um, the villages outside of Birmingham who want to come into Birmingham to work, but the local community, what is there for the local community here? And secondly, uh, this is being done to us rather than with us. So if this was Mosley, then you'd have a committee there saying, let us uh, have a word of how all this money is going to be spent, rather than just saying, this is the plan, Th this is, uh, we're consulting you, but we've already formed the plan, and uh, so hard luck, uh, anything you'll be taking might be mitigate certain things, but it's something that uh, you've had little say in, and. Uh, uh, so, have you any future ways of including the local community in this, or are we, as usual, just bystanders while uh, you and the councillors make your plans? Okay. okay. Um, I think there's there's lots of benefits for, for for local people with the with the sort of the what's set out um, in there. Um, the, the buses, the bus service provision will be. Will be better. They'll be more reliable. Um, better buses. Um, the so conditions to cycle, which are you know unpleasant and unsafe, will be improved, and and the walking conditions as well. And also, hopefully, we'll we'll provide better access to to get you know um, to the metro and rail system. So there's like people can access wider areas without um, you know needing to have a car. So. Um, you know, I think there are a lot, lot of positive things here for, for local people. But what about that central question, Jake, about local people being able to influence these plans? Yeah. Can you just tell us the, you produced a document, which is a draft, yeah? yeah. You, you, you had to bid for the money, yeah? So... And the, in bidding for the money, you had to have something on paper that the government could assess. Is that the... Is that the way it worked? So what um, we put in the bid for the West Midlands conurbation for for funding, yeah, and we had short timescales, but um, and it's based on you know the sort of plan schemes already 
um, for this area, you know, in the area and measures it in line with the consultation draft. Um, but, you know, it's it's not, we're still negotiating the final programme and, um, you know, the, the measures in this draft strategy are, are sort of being consulted on as part of consultation on this planning framework. And then with the, the cross city um, the bus scheme, um, currently designs are being drawn up, um, sort of they're looking at the survey data and there will be consultation on, on those sort of proposed um, designs of that scheme. I think they're planning in January. So again, there, there's some you know consultation on that um, as okay. well. Planned. But, but how, when you say consultation, so there's Chris sitting in his, his Summerfield Crescent and he's, and he's, he's got major, he wants to see better cycling, better walking routes, better public transport. How would he go about, um, and, and other residents, if there's a little action group, how would he go about influencing the draft proposal so that when you go back to the government for confirmation of the funding, he is more confident that his views and those of his neighbours have been listened to? Um, it's, I suppose it, the um, there will be sort of a, an, an indicative figure for like the Dudley Road, and then in light of what we've heard from consultation on the planning framework, that will you know influence the the, the, the schemes and measures within that. But I think the, the main things in that program are, or you know, the committed and planned schemes that are, you know the cross city bus route and also the Dudley Road major scheme that has recently been awarded funding. OK. David, David Gasson. Um, you probably know what I'm going to say, don't you, um, Carl? But <laughs> I like a lot of the words you're using, Jake, about sustainability, um, public transport, walking, cycling, that's all great stuff. But I, I am really concerned. I'm, I'm concerned about a couple of things actually in the bid for this huge bid for money from the government, because um, in my opinion, an awful lot of that money is going to go into trams. And to me, like the tram, the tram extension from um, town to Digbeth, it's only a mile long. It's costing 227 million. And I think with that money, what could you have done in terms of providing fantastic new bus fleet? And having more, you know, having better services on the buses. Because most people use the buses, don't they? Buses is the main form of public transport. Then there's trains too, and the train service isn't good enough. And then the other thing I wanted to say to you was, in the document that Samuel and Birmingham have done together, Dudley Road scheme is you're calling it a Dudley Road major scheme, but Birmingham Council's calling it Dudley Road improvement scheme. Why aren't you using the same language? Is that because there's some slight doubts in some people's minds about whether it really is an improvement to have such a big road cutting through um, a local centre? I just wondered about that because I think, you know, that Dudley Road widening it to five lanes in places and massive crossings, it, it's really not in line with the active travel ambitions, although the buses and stuff are good. But anyway, that's my question. Okay, we've got Robert coming up. Jake, are there some of these questions more designed for Robert? Yeah, um, yeah but as, as uh, with with our bid for government money, they had we had three months to put in a, a bid, and mm -hmm. it was it was agreed by the the seven leaders and the and the mayor, and um, so those priorities were sort of agreed by by our leaders across the West Midlands. Mm -hmm. This is the trouble with having a wider political boundary, David. I think it's more difficult mm. to, you know, getting agreement amongst the seven leaders is probably a really difficult task. And then to get agreement, you know, further down the, um, the food chain, as it were, would have been uh, particularly uh, difficult. I'll bring just, Robert you know. up. You can come in and answer the question about the Dudley Road um, improvement or widening or whatever, whatever word you, you bring in, but I'm going to bring in um, to a, a Jan first, Jan, Jan Smith, and then Sharon. Okay, thanks, thanks, Carl. Oh, I'm trying to get the picture up. Um, my understanding 
is that the widening is only happening as far as, say, uh, City Road. The bit between City Road and McDonald's is not going to be widened because you've got shops either side of it. So is it still not going to be widened? So you've got a five-lane five lane highway coming, coming up part of the Dudley Road, then you're going to have a tremendous bottleneck how on earth are you going to sort that bottleneck out at the top end of Dudley Road until you get to the roundabout by McDonald's? Or are you going to knock down Dudley Road shops altogether? Do you want, do you want me to take yeah, that? Yeah. Well, I think um, David, David's point and, and Jan's part. Okay. So I think firstly, in terms of the, the terminology and the naming of the scheme, I think it's... Um, so from our perspective, it's a Dudley Road Improvement Scheme. And it's we're pushing forward with proposals for the revised main scheme. So that's what's the Birmingham terminology, and that's what's going to go into the um, sort of the funding process and the full business case as we move forward. So I think it's I think it's just a thing with terminology, to be perfectly honest. Um, the other question about the widening beyond Ignil Port Road is. So the, the scheme actually stops pretty much where the bus stops are at Summerfield Park. So we're going as far as Ignil Port Road Junction and we're improving three junctions all the way through and also the junction with uh, Winston Green Road slightly further to the north. So the, anticipa the anticipation is by improving those junctions, the flow of traffic heading northwest towards sort of West Bromwich and Cape Hill will improve. And it will take pressure off the the traffic heading further west along Dudley Road through the shops. Okay, are you confident of that, Robert? We've got we've done extensive modelling. Okay, all right. And that's that's based on a city wide, well actually area wide um, yeah. model. Okay, uh, Sharon, you've been very patient. Oh, you're on mute, I think. Sorry, thank you. It, um, I don't know if, oh, sorry, I saw Jan's hand up as well. I wasn't sure she wanted to come back on anything before I said anything. Jan, do you want to come back? No, I'm just astounded that you think those junctions are going to stop all the pressure coming along Dudley Road. But let's hope you're right and I'm wrong. Sure. OK. Sharon. So, so the bit that I'm sort of interested in really is more around the um, cycle lanes and also the um, priority buses and stuff like that. Because I know that when we, a long time ago, when we was talking about cycle lanes and things like that, Carl and I received a lot of emails um, asking. And I remember at the time it was when um, the Bristol Road had its blue lanes and everybody was like, well, why can't we have something like that? And really, you know, when they started talking about the Dudley Road improvements, um, one of the things that the, the real thing that I was pushing for was really whether we could have blue cycle lanes and whether actually if there was a priority bus lane, is that actually going to encourage being stuck in traffic as a driver? Would it encourage you to jump on the bus if the bus is going to be get you there a little bit faster? So I think for me, I haven't heard anything around some of that. And actually, those are the things, some of the things that local residents were saying to me, particularly yeah. around the cycle lanes. And um, and that was why we were sort of pushing and lobbying. And I know the amount of times that emails went backwards and forwards. And when we kept saying we want blue cycle lanes and things like that, it just wasn't there. Um, yeah. And that this scheme for me was supposed to be one of the mechanisms of delivering some of those things because ultimately um, for local people it's about improving the environment, the air quality, um, getting cars off the road and encouraging people to travel a different way and when we just keep hearing words like sustainability and yes sustainability it's not really it's not really answering the question for me in terms of what local people and what we were really asking for so i just I think it's clarity it, yeah sure so in terms of the the proposals for the revised main scheme so it's, it's obviously the scheme's been in development for a long period of time um 
major revisions were done in response to the emergency travel plan. So last year, following COVID, we had the Birmingham Emergency Travel Plan came through. So like you say, there's a increased emphasis on bus lane provision, uh, priority buses at junctions, etc. And like you say, with the blue cycle lanes, they're included in the in the details now. So you've got segregated cycle links, which run from pretty much the Ignil Port Road junction in the west up up Heath Street, um, up Heath Street to the Winston Green Road junction, and then to the east, heading down Spring Hill, all the way down to the um, Tesco's superstore. And then you've also got connectivity to the canal um, and improved while well, we are introducing a, a new bridge crossing over the Soho Loop Canal. So again, that's you improving your connectivity or even new access steps down to the Soho Loop. Um, but you're very you're very right to point out that in the importance of transferring these these sustainability words back into the, the actual physical works on the ground. I think that's I think that's really important. OK, and just to clarify, I'm not sticking up for car users or suggesting that the improvements are for the car users. It's just that my understanding, my experience is when you when you're in traffic and you sat in a car, when people are turning the engines on and off, on and off constantly, that makes puts more into the into into the um, ethos. Yeah. And actually, if we can get people on buses and reduce yeah. people well, driving, it makes it better in terms of the environment. Yeah, it's pro it's providing alternatives, isn't it? That's yeah. that's what you want, Robert. I mean, I think the the real issue here is that. With all, you know, we've just had COP 20, what was it, 27 or 26? I, I never 26, know. 26, I think. 26. <laughs> yeah. um, and everybody seems to want to, you know, show their green credentials in terms of alternative transport and, 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 and getting rid of the car. Yeah. And it's as if it's like a tanker. This transport strategy is like a big super tanker and everybody wants to turn it around so that it becomes less car dominant and you know other forms of transport. Yeah. Yeah, all the schemes that are coming through, now and you're gonna say it's a legacy and that future schemes won't be so car dominant. But you know, people people can't understand why. These schemes are still predominantly motor car focused. You know, most of the money is going to be spent on the motor car, isn't it? I, I was just going to say in, in response to that. So one of the big issues on Spring Hill and the section of Dudley Road, probably up to Ignal Port Road Junction, is that the existing lane widths are substandard. So you've got safety considerations. Um, Obviously, if we're going to put a priority bus lane through, you're going to, they need a, I think it's something like just over three and a half, four metre width um, to for to safely accommodate a bus lane and a, and a passing lane. So I think in terms of the, the actual in physical infrastructure we've got at the moment, it's, it's constraining. And in order for us to implement Priority bus lanes, etc. It's it's a question of sort of road space reallocation and also where we have to we have to improve the layout. So it's a it's a it's a number of factors. Okay, let me just ask you one one more theoretical question. Sure. Um, Jan hit the nail on the head when she said you've got a dual carriageway. From Sandwell, from the Sandwell boundary, basically from the island where the McDonald's is, uh, and you've got going to have dual carriageway all the all the way up to um, the Little uh, Ignal Port Road, and then there's, you're going to have that that area in the middle, which is uh, is going to you know, good luck to whoever's trying to get stop illegal parking and to uh, allow you know more traffic. Flow through that area. I wish, I wish, I wish I, I, well. Um, yeah. But is has 
20 years ago when we were talking about, because the reason why the Dudley Road is what it is, is because the widening lines were taken off Soho Road 20 years ago, maybe longer, 20, 30 years ago, um, which is why Dudley Road is the na now the main route out of the city in that in the in the, uh, the west. Yeah. Um, so, was there any is there any thought being given to taking traffic off Dudley Road by Heath Street, which is quite a long, wide road, and then rejoining the dual carriageway? Um, you've got all that all that industrial units which Sandwell are going to build uh, houses. Why not take the traffic through there and away from Dudley Road altogether? You've you've hit you've absolutely hit the nail on the head. So that's why we're improving the Heath Street Junction. So that's one of the one of the main reasons. So it it will you'll be able to have divert traffic off to the northwest along Heath Street, and then we're also improving Winston Green Road Junction slightly further to the north, which will give that capacity then. OK, and there's me. I'm not even a, a well paid professional transport. Hit the nail on the head. <laughs> yeah, well, I, see, which is why Jake and Robert. Consultation with local people who live in an area and are familiar with the area and I know and know the area yeah. is so essential. Oh, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, OK. Um, anybody else want to come in on this? Can you just remind us of how people can uh, participate um, in the in the consultation? Just remind us. Um, so we've got the the consultation for the Dudley Road scheme. Oh, do you want to pick that one up now? Sorry. Um, I, I, so I so um, yeah, there's well, perhaps you can address the consultation on the Dudley Road scheme yeah. and then I'll respond on the wider corridor. Yeah, sure. So firstly, the public consultation for the Dudley Road scheme was actually undertaken in November last year. So we had we had quite a what sort of three, four week consultation. Um, quite a lot of interesting feedback, good feedback, um, which we've built into the proposals. So we've taken on board a lot of this stuff. Like some of the feedback um, Councillor Thompson was mentioning regarding the blue cycle lanes, all of that information so it's just feeding back into the proposals yeah um austin i read your comment you just go uh well i'm just i sorry I, I get on my hobby horse a bit so i i do go by bike and by train everywhere There's nobody uh, living there at the moment is the point yeah that's at the moment but the plan is to go and put a thousand plus houses you know um in the grove lane area so why we would ever then think about bringing even more traffic through the area i mean sh surely this is a bigger this this is a bigger ambition isn't it is to try and reduce the amount of traffic coming into town not not just reroute it different ways if you stand at the top of uh, cranford street which i often do and show people around the amount of tra traffic coming you know heading north into birmingham they automatically divert down cranford and heath, and heath street it's routinely blocked you know it's routinely backed up you've got big wagons it's an awful rat run you know, you've, you've already got a residential area further further south um, and the, and you, you can taste the pollution as you walk along there. So yeah. If we route more traffic, it'll only get worse. And it, you know, and it's, and it should not be it should not be. Uh, well, we favour one, you know, Heath Street over Dudley Street or, or, or Dudley Road or, or vice versa. It should be how we reduce the traffic coming into town. Exactly. So, and that, and that's that's where we're looking at the sustainable transport. Right. Offer. But you have to make, but you have to, but you have to, you do have to kind of make it less attractive for cars. Unfortunately, yeah. you have to make it, you, you have to make it so they're sitting in the car in in traffic, watching these lovely electric buses going whizzing past. And yeah. you know, I, 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 you know, there's a, there's a, I don't know what the route's called. There's a, there's a route, there's a route out towards Bourneville from the centre of town, which is brilliant. I don't know what you, you'll know what the road is. Oh yes, on the on the um, I know the one. Yeah, go down the middle a lot of the time, but, you know, yeah. and it's fantastic. It's really nice to ride, apart from the glass on the road. It's really nice to ride. It's 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 just so much better. You're amongst trees. It's it's a fantastic route for, for most of it. You've got to make it nice routes for people. Mm. That's how yeah. you get people on bikes. You will not get somebody. I've cycled all my life, so I'm confident in traffic. You will not get a beginner 
anywhere where they feel unsafe. Why should they? They got it. They got it. Got to feel protected, like no barriers. You know, you got to make it barrier free, easy to access, safe, pleasant. This, all this, this, this is where where we possibly can. This is this is where we're introducing the segregated cycle link. So you've got a whole sort of east west run from pretty much the middle way up to Bicknell Port Road Junction. Yeah. Um, we've also got the green links back to the Harborne Parkway and then the connectivity back to the canal as well. So we're looking at a, a wider uh, strategy just to try and link everything up. Okay. Uh, Austin, have you got a bell on your bike? <laughs> I, have. <laughs> I, have. I have. I have actually. <clears throat> I'm a walker, Austin, and I. Right. <laughs> I'm riding the road. I'm riding the road, I'm not the pavement. Been hit by more cycles than I am. <laughs> anyway, right. I, I'm, that's good. I agree with you all that that yeah. Um, if cycling was safe and attractive uh, and segregated, I'm sure the, the. I was in Oxford last week, and the number of cyclists was was amazing. Yeah. Um, I wish we could could have the same facilities. Uh, as they've got. Um, but I think it's not just, I think it's got to be, there's got to be financial incentives as well. Um, good, you know, the, um, yeah, we've got to, you've got to make it more financially attractive as well yeah. uh, to leave your car at home or, or indeed not, not get a car in the first place. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I seem to have stimulated some debate. So, Chris, over to you. I just wanted to make the point that I was down the Dudley Road last night, that Sunday evening, and how busy and bustling and alive it was with all the local businesses that are now thriving in that area. And I wondered if there was any move to make it into a business improvement district. I know they tried a few years ago, but lost out to so uh, Soho Ward. And uh, I think now would be a good time to get the businesses together to... Uh, to, to increase uh, the footfall in the area. Sure. Well, Sh Sharon and I had a meeting with some of the traders a while ago, Chris. I'll, I'll leave Sharon. If you could pick up on that, Sharon, um, when, I, when I've had David's comment. David. Yeah, um, just something on public health, really. On, along Dudley Road and Heath Street, there are a number of schools. You've got St. Patrick's School, which is right next to Dudley Road. And on Heath Street, you've got Summerfield School, where my daughter went. And Austin, I hope, will contradict me if I'm wrong, but I believe in Birmingham now, every year about nine 900 people are dying earlier than they should do because of air pollution. So one of my big concerns about widening a road and having more traffic is the effect on the, on the lungs of our young people, not only those people who are elderly or people who have got poor lung conditions. And I, I'd really like to see some hard evidence that air pollution is being looked at properly because... I've found out now that there's there's no monitoring of air pollution on Dudley Road. So we don't you often walk along it and you think, gosh, this air is really dirty, but we don't actually know whether it's over the legal limit or not. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I had my booster jab at City Road uh, Methodist Church on Saturday and walked uh, along City Road and back down Dudley Road. So I can confirm that. The Dudley Road is a thriving uh, commercial area um, that serves the local community very, very well. And where most of the local community do their shopping, actually. Um, and yes, David, um, I think uh, my lungs uh, suffered from, from walking that route rather than back along the <coughs> um, Sharon, do you want to come in on the, the bid potential for uh, Dudley Road? Yeah, I think we've we've talked a number of times with um, a number of the traders along the Dudley Road actually about whether um, uh, whether we whether they would like to explore becoming a bid. Um, I know that there's been other places across the city where that's worked particularly well. Um, I think it's difficult for them at the minute when we're having a look at that though, because having come out of um, well, we're not out of the pandemic, but as we're coming out the tail end of the pandemic, um, it's difficult for them to kind of rationalise in terms of sales and everything else that comes in there and the economic growth. But it is something that we um, would support um, 
and work with the traders with if that was the route that they wanted to go down because it can make a significant um, difference having something like a bid in the area um, a number of the um, there's also conversations to be had in terms of the from the environmental side of it as well um, because we've seen that the shops above the, the flats above the shops there's been a lot of um, sometimes there's waste issues around there which also adds to that massively so um john o'shea is looking at that as well in terms of that perspective but i think that's the key thing carl i think we was talking to them about potentially looking at bid but i think the climate's a bit difficult at the minute yeah unless you um, something that you wanted to add to that no no I, I yeah i remember the meeting we had upstairs in one of the uh job um the problem is, as with all these things, you've got to have a majority of traders in favour and uh, that means they have to pay more. Um, and yeah, on the margins of profitability, it's something that, that a lot of them uh, I think would struggle to um, struggle to pay for. So I think, we, you know, areas like Dudley Road, which aren't as, as wealthy as the Harborns and Bournevilles and, and other parts of the city need you know, some, some degree of recognition that, that um, they need help more than, uh, than other areas. Um, Chris, you wanted to come back. Well, just um, when I talked to the traders, they said it's the Lidl's and the Tesco's of this world who determine whether it becomes a bid. So you have to talk to them probably not locally, but okay. uh, more regionally or nationally. Uh, and if you get them on board, then uh, it probably all systems go. Yeah, you, you, you're probably right. They're, they're the ones with the, the money, aren't they? Eva. Uh, thank you, Carl. I'm not sure whether you're, um, you have finished the agenda at this point. Um, I'm mindful well, I'm of just, the time. I'm just gonna I'm just going to wrap up and thank everybody and then um, tell you that England's leading 1-0, Harry Maguire, after six minutes. I'm Excellent. very interested, but I've got an energy. <laughs> And question. then go on to any other business. Okay, so um, you want I'm to carry on then? One last time, has there anybody got any other issues on the uh, Dudley Road Corridor Transport Strategy? I, I think, Robert and Jake, you'll be back at this committee, um, this forum, in the coming weeks and months because it is such a critical issue for us. Um, and we want to be fully involved uh, uh, throughout the, um, the process. And, and Austin, if you can email Sharon and myself, um, you, you'll know where to get our email from online. And we'll, we'll set up a meeting, hopefully before Christmas, where we can continue the dialogue. Um, I think you, you've made a big difference. Um, we could have done with you in post uh, a while ago, but you're here now. And we let me tell you, we're going to make the most of you. All right. Brilliant. Thank you. I'll be in touch. Also to Neil, thank you very much indeed. Again, I think this is this is not going to be the last time you're going to be coming to uh, to this meeting. Okay. I'll now ask for any other business. We've got a few minutes. Eva, you wanted to raise something. Thank you, Carl. Um, I'm disappointed to see that yet again the enormous changes at Edgebaston Reservoir are not regarded as significant enough to be placed on the Ward Forum agenda. I was even more astonished to see that the only bit of news about the reservoir in the newsletter that's just been sent out was a decision to make the entrances to the reservoir more accessible, which was agreed in principle almost two years ago. So it didn't feel to me like it was news. To ensure that the general public and anyone who might be interested are able to learn about what the council intends to do at the reservoir, uh, we're intending to hold a public meeting on Zoom on Thursday, the 2nd of December, December at 6.30. Uh, we will, of course, be happy if any of the ward councillors um, could attend. We, we will invite you, of course, um, as will the reservoir users who've already supplied us with their contact details. Um, if anyone here would like to receive an invite to the Zoom public meeting, you can go to Save Edgebaston Reservoir on Facebook. You can go to Friends of Edgebaston Reservoir on Instagram. You can email um, 
at Edgebaston Reservoir Co at gmail.com and we will happily send you an invite to the meeting. Okay. Um, are they, is the council proposing to drain the reservoir then, Eva? Because you say you need to save it. What 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 is the council proposing to do? Are they are they going to stop people walking around it? Are they going to damage the wildlife? I'm, I'm I'm really intrigued why you should call it Save Edgebaston Reservoir. Is that a serious question that you'd like me to answer, Carl? Well, I'm intrigued as to why you think the reservoir's in imminent danger. We we can have disagreements over aspects of it, but is it really in danger? Uh, Carl, that, that is um, a carryover from our previous campaign with Countrywide. We still kept that okay. title on the face. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, at well, the meeting, we will be making some important announcements, uh, and I um, I would urge you to come along. We'll also be inviting the shadow uh, minister for the environment, who just happens to be our local MP, uh, Preet Gill. So I don't know if she'll accept, but... Uh, We'll okay. make the the invites, so right. that that will be the the burden of the meeting because there are things going on at the reservoir. So it's, it's about that the being shared with the local community. So okay. that that will be the uh, the dialogue we'll be introducing. So, so uh, it's about the tower ballroom site then. Principally, yes. Okay. okay. All right. Well, let's let's be clear. The reservoir is not in danger. There is a there is a debate and dialogue over what's going to happen to the Tower Ballroom and, if it is demolished, what will happen to the site. So, um, Carl, uh, Carl, to say that that doesn't have an impact on the reservoir, it's like well, saying that the roads that we've just talked about building don't I'm, have an I'm impact not, on I'm cyclists. Not say, I'm not saying it will have an impact, but it isn't going to destroy it, is, is the point I'm making. It... it um, for me, and and I'll, and I'll let me put my perspective. The reason I why I personally am in favour of the demolition of the tower ballroom is I walked around here. I had, a, in fact, I had a, a meeting with someone from the local PCT on Friday, and rather than have a meeting in an office or via Zoom, we walked around the reservoir talking. And when we got to the tower ballroom site, we had to walk under this horrible concrete structure and wouldn't it be better if it was 20 meters further back so that we could have a green area 20 meters from the shoreline than rather than it is at the moment that's the point that uh, that's that's the principal reason why um i'm in favor of the demolition if someone can show me how you can improve that part of the walkway around the reservoir and keep the tower ballroom in its present um, structure, then I, I would be all ears. Um, and that's what we want well, to think, discuss. Think... Okay. All right. Well, look, you've got your public meeting coming up, and we almost certainly will have a discussion at a future ward forum. Um, it's just that these two issues were critical, um, and the, the deadline fitted... Um, our meeting schedule. Sharon, you've got a uh, sorry, Sharon. You, Sharon, you've got another uh, item of urgent business. Yeah, it's not. It's not necessarily urgent. And just um, Eva, in terms of um, the agenda for tonight's meeting, um, I was asked a, a few times if we could have um, a, a, a meeting that was based around transportation. Um, and that's why the agenda for tonight. Carl and I decided to have the agenda for tonight based on trans portation and highways um, because that's something people have been requesting for some time. If um, anybody on the call or anybody in the public wants specifics on the agenda, please feel free to email them into Kay as well. Um, when we're populating the agenda, we're more than welcome, you know, we're more than happy to to look at that. And in terms of the um, the, the improvements to the um, entrances. Carl and I had had a meeting with the engineers on site and um, where they said actually even though it has been in the pipeline for a long time it was just that they'd agreed the um, 
the, the proposals to actually crack on and get it done. So that was the reason why that was included within that. So um, just in terms of my item, it was just really, I don't know those that have seen, but um, the council are consulting on selective licensing, which is all to do with the private rented sector. Um, and it's about a licensing scheme. There's 25 wards that have been included in the consultation and North Edgebaston is one of those wards that have included. So um, I'm just sort of um, encouraging people to, whatever your views are around that, um, if you can just, um, if you're minded to, to actually contribute towards the consultation. Um, I know that there'll be many people who, you know, there'll be landlords who will be opposed to us having um, um, ha having selective licensing. I know that some people will have questions around it, particularly those that live in the private rented sector. But whatever your views are, whether you're for or against living, don't live in um, or live next to um, private rented um, properties. And um, it'd be really great if we can have as many people um, add to the consultation as possible so that we can have a wide view of what people across the ward really think and whether that um, selective licensing is something that we want to pursue for this particular ward. OK, um, of all the, the issues that Sharon and I deal with, the question of exempt accommodation and the proliferation of HMOs is is uh, is top of our um, of our list. Um, it's something that we get emails on every day. So um, we're tackling both issues: uh, the selective licensing and uh, exempt accommodation. In fact, we anticipate a scrutiny report, which I'm leading on, going to full council in December. And I have to say local residents across the whole of the city have been instrumental in in both um, calling for the uh, the scrutiny, but also helping us develop policy and the recommendations uh, for both the local authority and central government. So that illustrates how yeah. important it is to have these sorts of forums to, uh, to allow people to participate. And Sharon, it was you when you were a cabinet member that started the constituency wide uh, consultation, public meetings, which were, I think, where all that impetus grew from. So uh, thank you very much for that. No worries. Um, just, just to be clear on that consultation as well, because um, I, I it's exempt accommodation or supported housing in law is not classed as a HMO. Yeah. So that is not, not included in the selected yeah. license. This is the private rented sector and those are not considered in law as to be part of the private rented sector. But we'll make sure that Kay sends out the details with all the consultation on yeah. Yeah, yeah. links. Which is why I said, you know, select HMOs and, and exempt are the two, two biggest issues. Um, okay. Um, I've got nobody else indicating. Um, we, we, can't, sorry, I think Eva had a hand. It went up and then it went back down. Yeah, I, think, I think that was the. Um, I'm assuming Eva that that was the. Uh, the. Yes, the the meeting on the second. Yes, Carl. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, brilliant. Okay, well, we, hope to see, we hope to see that. We've got the celebrating communities meeting earlier on that evening, but. Uh, Hopefully we'll have finished by um, by then and we look forward to uh, discussing with you uh, to try and get a consensus over the way forward because no one likes to be at odds with local residents uh, or a section of, of local residents. So I'm sure Sharon and I will do all we can to try and get a consensus over the, the town ballroom site. OK, thank you very much indeed. And uh, if I don't see you before Christmas, have a... Have a great Christmas, but I'm sure I'll see most of you during the, the, the next few weeks. Thank you very much indeed. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thanks for chairing, Carl. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. For Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Good night. Bye.